Hello, many blessings, many solstice blessings. Thank you for joining us and thank you to all the other beautiful speakers and we welcome you and welcome this beautiful day, beautiful energy as we are here on Mother Earth. My name is Anais Sabo and we're here to share some of consciousness and star beings and moving into these times and as these different things keep on layering for the collective and for all of humanity, it's become very, very vital to use your own spiritual abilities, your instincts to go beyond your conditioning and start to tune into your consciousness. And what is that? You are consciousness. Yes. And we're here and being here incarnate in these vessels means that we have to remember, we have to reorganize ourselves to expand, to meet ourselves, to be able to grow and to move into your purpose, right? And to move into why you're actually here. What are you here to do? Are you here to help? Because I do believe you are. Um, so my uh, grandparents came from Hungary and then on um, my maternal lineage and on um, my paternal lineage my grandmother came from Finland and I have Romani ancestors. My star family which is mostly Syrian I um, have always connected through my Romani lineage always and um, also through my Hungarian lineage so the blood in me, the extra DNA in me is very ancestral and um, how they've worked with the lineages for so long uh, brings a great deal of, of wisdom in my bones, right? To recall and remember and be open in the place I am now where I'm now able to fully work with them and help others. Right? And together we work towards helping the collective. It's important to um, share stories of, of how things become, right? And how I've become who I am and remembering my mission and remembering so deeply and then expanding with that and evolving within the space of each layer I move into in this incarnation it's very powerful, it's very intense, it's very, um, it's been very intense, right? And so as these times are building and building and getting stronger and stronger, it's so much more appropriate for me to be where I am, appropriate for me to understand where I am and to have gone through everything I've gone through and continue to go through in order to help, right? And to be here and to fully give um, as much as I do of, of what I know and what my star family brings through and the council and how, again, the, the work moves towards the collective, right? The collective consciousness of humanity. Um, it's important to recognize yourself and to recognize that everything is about choice right and now with so much happening and choices attempting to be taken away from many people uh, you have to choose right you have to choose what your position is what your place is where you stand what do you stand for if you don't if you don't you are being chosen for Right, so we're at a point where it's vital, it's vital for people to really get brave and step up and want to really open themselves up to their purpose. And is that easy? No, it's hard and you have to face yourself and your density and your, your darkness over and over and over again to keep exploding and keep blooming and keep falling apart to expand yourself more and more, right? There's no one ascension that you're gonna get to. It takes work, there's time and it's your work. It's your unique work and your own very personal um, 
tenacity, right? That you can dig into like how, where is my spiritual endurance? Do I have some? How can I create more? Where can I allow myself to, to start having more, more space, more openness, more willingness to go into all the hard stuff, right? All the, all the, in, the, uh, um, dense is the best word I like to look at energy you know people use the word unconscious when there's density there can be a variety of energies there there could be karmic ancestral this lifetime uh, trauma all that stuff right can be all these things clumped into density we want to bring into awareness and this is where the work unfolds pace by pace for each person. Um, my star family speaks of how um, this timeline we're in and how this illusion of linear time that we, our minds like to ride is quickening. There is an actual change in frequency and a tonality towards the what we perceive how much time we have, right? So this has nothing to do with your chronological age or even how many times you've incarnated. It's more to do with energy building, right? And moving much faster. So if you're mm, just starting your journey, let's say spiritual journey, it will feel a certain way, right? It, it might feel... Um, too fast or get anxious or overwhelmed and as you start to move along your own journey this will change right I give the example of if you're just starting or or you're wherever you are on your path um, this uh, frequency raising it can be experienced in ways that feels crushing or crumbling right uh, having to you have to it's very important to start to go inward in a very very real and very very palpable way disconnecting from the matrix reality um every day for for given amounts of time to pull back from that pull back from the machine pull back from the energy of uh all of that is not natural, right? We'll say that and allow your own energy to find its positioning and its movement within this new vibration that's coming through. This will be the guide, right? This will be part of the guiding in. And there's a lot of heart energy that's happening, heart space energy, uh, because so much um, <clears throat> so much of what's coming at us is very much shutting down the heart space, shutting down the third eye, shutting down you know these upper energy centers and in which where we connect directly to creative, right? Through this energy center. If there's an attack here, attack here, attack here, uh, we start to, people start to resonate and and uh, live at very low vibrations, right? Uh, lower energy centers, fear, wanting to fight or flight, control energy, being controlled, and then being willing to fight for that control, right? And imposing that will upon others who are choosing something different. So allowing your energy to move into your heart space, clearing out as much as you can in your third eye and your pineal gland and connecting directly to the creator is so, so, so important and so powerful. And <clears throat> it's the, you know, you want to come back to that because that's part of what they want to disconnect, right? Disconnecting people. If you, find yourself disconnected from source, right? I can feel very lonely. How, then what is there, right? There's, oh, there's what I'm being told, 
which maybe that doesn't feel good anyway, but, uh, uh, <laughs> right? And then the constant um, uh, devices and, and being bombarded with technology, right? This technology matrix technology, it really creates a perfect storm. And so letting yourself loosen that, loosen up, loosen your energy to find your space. And you can only really find that alone and in stillness, right? And in going inward, releasing and grounding, connecting your energy to this planet is, is, we really need to be doing that when you're here incarnate. I know um, I work with a lot of people and it's, um, it becomes a thing for folks, right? Like not grounding and not connecting to this planet because somewhere inside of them, there's some story that has to do with not actually wanting to be here, right? And wanting to be home and not knowing what that is and, and having, having a, pain and fear around that and, and trauma that bubbles up and then a knee-jerk reaction is to disconnect from this planet well this planet is where we are this planet feeds us she's beautiful and that's our birthright is to connect right to release to have a beautiful release of our energy any old energy that's ready to go goes deep into mother earth and she alchemizes that as she will it's a gift. It's a gift and it keeps one standing firm, right? Standing here, actually being here on this planet. You know, so much of um, distraction and distortment into false realities, into animated AI realities completely disconnects from a person from from this planet but how couldn't it right if you're in your mind you're not being creative there's no creative energy connecting or channeling through you you're being bombarded with imagery with things that are false utter program right so even if being within that is part of what you do it's also so important to be outside and to let your energy run and connect. All of this to say, none of this is small or simple. This is complex. And, you know, so many people uh, feeling their purpose calling, but maybe not completely in alignment with their purpose yet, but they know that they it's coming, right? And again, so many people are asking, and, and well, how do I you know, how do I get in more alignment? How do I connect to my guides? All this way, right? There's no quick way. It, it takes work. It takes patience and willingness to, again, take yourself on over and over. And it's challenging. It's very challenging. With um, this higher frequency that is happening here, right? Uh, it's also bringing in a very, um, how would I say this, translate this kind of energy, it's like a percolating energy, right? It's percolating, it's bubbling. So there's so much possibility once you start to just tap into that frequency and hold it when you can and let your energy, your very DNA adjust to this frequency that's so full and ripe with possibility. It does take a willingness to let creative energy channel through you, right? Creative energy as in what do you see? What does your imagination show you? What does your sight show you, right? Not what you're told, not what you've been wrongfully educated, but what you know, what you feel, what is your spiritual gift? right? What are your abilities? Do you, are you super empathic? Do you have vision? Do you have multiple? And starting to work with that and let that be your guiding force. This is a huge part of the work I do in my trainings. Um, 
with groups is is helping people to remember and recognize their their strongest spiritual abilities and let that be the boat right let that be the boat to navigate and help clear out other energies <clears throat> when you can trust your ability, even if it's just a, a, well, I get a knowing, right? And to really, really start to trust that, so many things will open, so many new realities and portals into other abilities will begin to open. But you have to be willing to to use that and use your abilities and don't question them. Even if you have doubt, you don't question, right? Oh, okay, well, maybe I'm getting this hit. What does this mean, right? Not that you're wrong, but energy can come in as metaphors. Most of the time it does. You know, you're going to be guided in a certain way that might not fit within this 3D structure. And so that takes that third eye opening up more and more and using those feelings to feel and see what's happening and combining, right? Because collectively as holistic beings, we do have the ability to use all of the spiritual senses and even open deeper up into telepathy, how I communicate with my star family. Telepathy, they speak that way. So we have all these abilities. <clears throat> <clears throat> that sometimes are latent and we have to wake them up. And I do find a thing, it's some kind of amusing that, uh, you know, um, you have an awakening, you begin to move through that and you know, okay, here it is now, I'm here I go. Well, <laughs> it's, it's not just one thing, right? You, the, the, it's continuous. That's why you're here. Life is a school of learning and there's missions and purposes depending on who you are and where you come from. And all of that takes a long amount of uh, you being willing to do the work, right? This amount of, of energy that needs to alchemize, right? So it's not simple and small and all of a sudden, boom. Um, that's a setup. I watch people set themselves up because then, then that turns into a space where you start to be negative to yourself and critique and think these these inappropriate, you know, things because you think you did something wrong or, or oh, I knew it or whatever that go back to is, right? We really have to readjust the relationship with the mind, the human mind is a tool it's not in charge but yet most people i won't say most people a lot of people right live in their head live in that constant all their energy is is condensed around their mind as if that's it you think everything and that's it if i think it long enough and hard enough i can change things yeah. Not really. You know, you got to drop in. You got to let your energy start moving and use the thinking to then expand you into more creative thought, expand you into consciousness, into your consciousness, into your connection to your own, again, ability and to your guides, your guides that come and want to speak to you. Um, star beings, sky people. You know, <laughs> most cultures can speak of them and not outwardly, but it's, it's, you know, talked about to one another, talked about through story and mythology and folklore. And um, and as I said, most of my um, star family is Syrian and um, the way that they work with my, have worked with my ancestors and how that energy moves through me, uh, is very unique. Um, so different different guides bring different energy. Star beings bring a very particular energy. It's a very um, obviously higher consciousness, right? They're of higher consciousness, and so being being again incarnate and and expanding with the incarnation 
to remember that and tap into all those gifts is, is very powerful. It took me almost dying. It took me going through so many things, so many very, very hard and very, very real awakenings to land where I am, right? So it, it takes, again, that spiritual drive. And with this frequency and with what is happening with the matrix and what's coming at humanity from a bigger picture, it's actually really, really right. Like I was starting this whole talk of energy is very possible right now because there's so much available if you can pull back from the propaganda, from everything that's being pushed, right, to shut people down, to keep people quiet and in fear and locked away, right, away from each other. Uh, but from a bigger picture, there's so much happening that is very exciting and we need to step up and meet that. And that's where each person comes in. That's where you come in with, where are you? What are you doing on your path? What are you willing to do? What are you answering the calls? Are you answering your the call of your heart, the call of the spirit, the call of your guides? Or are you just listening and being in that lower vibration where Mm, it's fear, but fear has many faces, right? Fear is slippery and sticky, especially programmed fear, so that uh, it triggers overwhelm. It triggers a burnout, right? A burnout. People's nervous systems are fried, right? Even just being in this modern reality, um, a lot of the work... <laughs> is helping people to soothe the nervous system, right? And so that creates an overwhelm. And that overwhelm in your vessel creates a, a, a inhospitable place, right? And so part of when we feel that way in our vessel, we jump out unconsciously, right? We'll, energy will spread our energy, not expand, but move it around. And so deciding and committing to yourself where you are and what you want to do. And even if you don't know what that is or how you're going to do it, but you know there's a calling, now is the time to answer. There is no more time. <laughs> and now is the time, right? Um, I, we are very excited to um, be gathering um people who've gone through these trainings and, and creating a more advanced work where the collective conscious collective will be very, very focused on and helping, helping consciousness to have ways and helping higher consciousness and these visions that my star family brings and shows, they um, aren't just going to show up and do it for people. People have to do the work right? But you can't connect to a higher consciousness being from a very low vibration and just expect them to, to fix everything. That's not the way it works. But we can participate greatly, greatly participate in these changing times. And how do you do that, right? And it's a question to ask without an immediate answer. Right? Maybe you don't have an immediate answer and that's okay. But posing that question and continuing to follow energy, right? Following energy. Oh, I feel I'm 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 feeling interested in this. Let me learn a little more. What else is happening for me? You know, learning your triggers, learning where um you might be sabotaging yourself, right? Where you might say, no, no, that's not for me. But deeper, it's maybe you don't feel good enough. You don't deserve that. You know, all that stuff. All part of the density, right? Get your energy running. Get your energy running in a way that you can tell when you're grounded. You can tell when you're not grounded. That's what's more important. Like, 
whoo, I feel fun and uh, my energy is like super concentrated. Am I even grounding? When you ask that question, your energy follows your intention. So, okay, ground. <sighs> yeah, you can sit in meditation and run your energy and be there for as long as you want. And it's beautiful. You can also do that when you're out in public, engaging the public, right? Like, oof, let me ground. Let me make sure my protection is strong. Um, most people probably already know that. And the reminder is to do it more. Pay more attention because more is coming at us. And so any in, right? That's how entities and dark energy work. When there's an in, when there's an unconscious, that's how they get in. And there are, you know, scouts and things out there. So you want to be very mindful of your energy. Very, very mm, keeping yourself in a safe space energetically speaking so you can see what's happening different than being in fear fear and then everything is like shuts down and like you kind of can't see right you're breathing heavy <gasps> that overwhelm comes in that's totally different right protection so that your energy is protect protected so you can see feel taste touch what truth is around you and and happening and what's actually coming at you from a place where you have a filter, right? Protection filters us from things we don't want, unwanted energy. So it all comes down again to the third eye, into that pineal gland and working, working, working that energy as um, someone with extraterrestrial blood, uh, my third eye has always been my biggest gift, vision, which which was not fun when I was a kid. It was it was quite a scary world I lived in, seeing things and not knowing how to interpret it, and the adults around me didn't speak to these things, so it was very intense. And um, where did I find comfort? Was being in nature and and listening to my star family and and having them guide me in ways that I knew and could connecting to the animals and so we look to what we know right you look to what you know spiritually what feels appropriate and in alignment with you spiritually right and what are those gifts again and how can you um, build a deeper relationship with your gifts right this is how you connect deeper with your guides you it's through you because <laughs> it's not outside of you it's through you and so the more healing you do layer by layer piece by piece the more open you become right the more your energy is in movement and flow and you can evolve so this is how evolution works spiritually speaking energetically speaking and <clears throat> again and just to close with this um, frequency that's coming, it is very powerful and you can tap into this to help accelerate your own growth, your own <clears throat> tenacity, and your own willingness to continue to do the work. It's a very, um, it's, the int its intention is not to be helpful, right? But it is super helpful for us. <laughs> in our in our practices and in our evolution so so tapping in and giving yourself space and break from the matrix reality right good it's been a pleasure and i send everyone much love and many blessings